Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to my session. Um, my name is Dmitry Kaidalov. I'm a research engineer at Input Output, but also I have a very deep relationships with the Horizon project, which is lasting many years. And today I'm going to talk about the cross side chain interoperability and how we can enable transferring of tokens between different side chains. But before I start, I want to present myself. Um, even though many of you know me, um, during the last couple of years, the community and the Horizon team grew significantly. So I see a lot of new faces these days. So I'm a blockchain researcher, cryptographer, and a software engineer. Um, I'm from Ukraine. I got my higher education there in the field of information security systems. I also studied uh, software engineering in Sweden, and I got my PhD in the field of symmetric cryptography. Um, I work in IT industry more than 10 years. I started as a software developer doing various stuff and working for different companies. But since 2016, um, I started to work for Input Output, which is a blockchain company mostly known as the main developer of Cardano. But besides Cardano, we do a lot of other stuff and we, we do a lot of uh, general research um, in different areas. So as a research engineer, I work on designing um, new protocol and systems in, in the areas like side chains, stable coins, consensus protocols, and other. Um, what's more interesting is my uh, collaboration with the Horizon project. It started back in 2017, and back then I helped with the initial launch of the mainnet. And then I also contributed to the core development during the first months of the project. And since that moment, I became an active member of the project and participated in many research uh, endeavors. Uh, one of the most notable is probably the research of the side chains, which led to the appearance of Zendu. And currently I do research of cross side chain interoperability, which is a further step in the development of the Horizon ecosystem. Um, okay, so we already have a good talk from Alberto, who talked about Zendo, but anyway, I want to do this presentation self-contained, so I will start uh, with the general stuff. I will talk about the blockchain scalability in general and what problems we have, and then how we came to the idea uh, to build Zendo. And then I will switch to the cross sidechain protocol and how we can enable um, transferring of tokens between different sidechains. Um, important to note that this work is a joint work of myself, Alberto, and Roman Olinikov, who is another research member uh, in our team. Okay, so let's begin. So the Bitcoin first appeared in 2008, and immediately it gained a lot of attention from the experts in uh, different fields. And its appearance created a whole new industry, and a lot of projects and a lot of uh, blockchain systems appeared after that. Many other cryptocurrencies with different uh, features and functionalities. Um, the concept of smart contract emerged, which allows to build uh, applications of any complexity on top of the basic infrastructure. And as the popularity grew, the usage of cryptocurrency platforms grew as well. And shortly after, it became apparent that they are quite limited in their computational capability and in their ability to scale. And the blockchain researchers started to think how to scale these platforms. And the first obvious direction was to improve the basic properties of the protocol, like to improve the consensus protocol, uh, to increase the block size, decrease the time between blocks, but this is what is called layer one scalability solutions. But this direction is inherently limited because 
it might compromise the security. Bitcoin has the capacity to process seven transactions per second for a reason. And even though we can scale this a bit, but it's very hard to scale like order of magnitudes higher. That is why there are two solutions, scalability solutions appeared. Uh, the basic idea is to offload the basic blockchain infrastructure and to process transactions outside of the main blockchain. Um, there can be different approaches to do that. The Bitcoin ecosystem uh, uh, have the solution, name it Lightning Network, which utilizes the payment channels. Uh, the Ethereum ecosystem um, mostly focuses on rollups these days, and the Horizon made their bet on sidechains. Um, actually, the sidechains were first introduced in 2014 by Adam Beck and others as the scalability solution for Bitcoin. But in, in Bitcoin, it didn't really get traction, which I personally think is a big omission. Instead, many other projects adopted this idea, and Horizon is one of them. Um, the basic idea is simple. Uh, you create a separate blockchain with whatever functionality is needed, and you provide a way for this blockchain to communicate with the main chain. Commu uh, communication, first of all, means the ability to transfer the native uh, blockchain asset to and from the side chain. Um, this way, for instance, blockchain sy systems like Horizon can be extended with um, additional functionality like smart contracts or the governance system implemented in a separate side chain. Um, advantages are clear. So it is almost unlimited scalability because we can create as many side chains as we want. And it is a great flexibility because we can put um, almost any logic inside the side chain that we want. And in Horizon, we started to research side chains back in 2018. And there was uh, several uh, models until eventually we came to Zendu in 2020. Um, so what is Zendu? Zendu is a universal construction for Bitcoin-like blockchain systems that allows the creation and communication with sidechains of different types without knowing their internal structure. Uh, Zendu considers a parent-child relationship with the main chain, which means that sidechains directly observe the main chain, while the main chain observes only the uh, cryptographic, uh, only the cryptographically authenticated certificates that come in from the sidechains. Uh, the certificate authentication and validations are achieved by using SNARKs, which enable uh, constant site proof of uh, almost arbitrary uh, computations. The feature of the construction is that sidechains are allowed to define their, their own SNARKs, so that establishing their own rules to verify and validate. Uh, certificates. And the fact that uh, all SNARK proofs comply with the same verification interface um, allows a great uh, universality because sidechains can use any protocols inside. Um, the basic flow is the following. A sidechain is registered in the main chain by creating a special transaction which sets the ID, the initial state, and what's more important, the verification key for the, for the SNARK. And after the sidechain is launched, it should, be, it should periodically submit certificates that are authenticated by a proof. And such certificates, for instance, can commit to, to a sidechain state, and uh, that this state, this state will be proven by, by a SNARK. Um, the main chain expects that the certificates submitted to the main chain in uh, strict periods. If it doesn't, uh, if the side chain fails to do that, then it basically stops working. So basically the two main functions of the certificate is to probably transfer the, back the native main chain asset and to commit to the verifiable side chain state. So that uh, such committed state becomes basically an irreversible checkpoint enforced by the main chain. Um, 
Okay, but Zendo only defines the communication between the main chain and a particular side chain. Moreover, it mostly focuses on transferring the main chain native asset. A very needed feature was to allow side chains to communicate uh, among each other directly, because it will allow to create a, a, a new applications that utilize uh, simultaneously different sidechain networks. And thus we came to the need to develop a protocol for cross sidechain communication. Uh, but such a protocol cannot be part of the Zendo because the basic concept is that Zendo doesn't know anything about the internal logic of the sidechain. So that's why um, we need to develop a separate protocol on top of, on top of Zendo. Okay, um, so the basic idea is that sidechains that want to interact must implement uh, a certain uh, specialized interface. And the interface defines uh, an abstract mechanism for transferring messages from one sidechain to another. It should be implemented by sidechains using its uh, customization capabilities. The, the, the main chain and Zendo itself are not affected. Um, okay, so some sidechains may implement this interface, some may not. It's completely up to the internal sidechain logic to decide this. Um, but like the, the basic cross-sidechain communication protocol, it only defines the method to, to transfer like uh, abstract messages. And then on top of this, the sidechains have to define Particular types of uh, <clears throat> particular types of messages that they are going to to exchange and and processing rules for them. For instance, they might implement transferring of uh, custom tokens based on the CSCP protocol. And <clears throat> yeah, so this will require to to extend the the basic protocol with the token transfer protocol. Okay, so now let's dive a little bit deeper into how exactly the cross sidechain communication protocol works. So let's assume that we have two sidechains, A and B, and a user on the sidechain A wants to send a message to a user on the sidechain B. In this case, uh, he has to create a special transaction and submit it to the sidechain A. And we assume that at the end of the withdrawal epoch, all the messages that uh, that were submitted to sidechain A, they are collected and put into the Merkle tree, and the root hash of this tree is inserted into the withdrawal certificate, which is eventually submitted to the main chain. Uh, once the certificate confirmed in the main chain, it cannot be reverted, and that the sidechain state committed in this, this certificate can be considered as uh, final including the messages that are included in this uh, certificate. <clears throat> so from that moment, the messages can be safely delivered to the sidechain B with the guarantee that, uh, that they won't be canceled or disappear from the sidechain A. Um, a receiver in the sidechain B has to observe the message on A directly and uh, he should create a special transaction where he insert the message itself and the proof that this message was indeed included in the, into the confirmed uh, withdrawal certificate that was submitted to the main chain. Uh, note that the protocol itself uh, does not define how exactly transactions with messages are processed inside the side chains and what side effects they incur. This is done intentionally to enable flexibility. Uh, generally, it is assumed that if some sidechain state is committed to the main chain, it cannot be reverted. And, and the state that was committed to this certificate, we can trust it because it was verified by a uh, snark proof. This is actually the main idea of uh, Zendo. Also, as you noted, uh, a user on the receiving side has to redeem the message manually. At first sight, it might seem not uh, efficient 
because the user has to directly observe the send in sidechain and to extract the message. But if we, if we look deeper, uh, we, we can see that it, uh, it allows to, to achieve certain very good properties. And it solves a lot of scalability issues because if we, uh, if we implement the, the receiving side in a way that all messages are synchronized automatically, it may be a problem. If we have too many messages, then the, side, the receiving sidechain may not have enough capacity to process them. So we kind of spread the load among different users and every user pay uh, his own cost for, the message, for his own message. Okay, so now let's look what actually the message is in the CSCP protocol. First of all, it contains the identifiers of the, of the sending sidechain and receiving sidechain as they were defined in the main chain. It contains also the message type and it contains three abstract field, sender ID, receiver ID, and payload hash. And the semantics of this field are not uh, really defined by the CSCP protocol. They are further defined by the particular instantiation of this protocol. And the payload hash uh, can include, this is the hash of some additional information about the message. For instance, if, if the message is used to transfer some token, it contained, uh, the payload contained the uh, information about the token and the hash of this payload is included in the message. Okay, so one of the key things when considering blockchain interoperability is the ability to transfer assets among different chains. The main use cases are allowing to trade assets on different chains, um, enabling users to borrow assets on one chain, and provide uh, as a collateral some assets from another chain or transferring ownership among different chains and many others. That is why one of the main requirements uh, was to enable transferring of tokens. For this reason, we designed the Mito token transfer protocol. Mito is, uh, is an extension to the cross sidechain communication protocol that enables transferring of tokens issued on different sidechains. And one of the main design principles of Mito token transfer protocol is that tokens are tracked by the issuing sidechain when they are sent outside. Um, so it is impossible for a malicious sidechain uh, to send back forged tokens that uh, haven't been originally sent there. Um, this also implies that the tokens can only be sent from or to the original sidechain, but not uh, between foreign sidechains. Um, the sidechains that enable token transfers uh, should implement certain interfaces and adhere to rules of processing tokens that are specified by the protocol. Uh, the meta protocol itself does not rely on a specific sidechain construction, and it can be integrated into different sidechains given that they follow uh, certain rules. So this protocol can be viewed as something similar to ERC-20 or ERC-721. In Ethereum, um, the protocol supports both uh, fungible and non-fungible tokens. Um, Sorry, can I make it just a question? Uh, yeah. Of the slides before, uh, just because of, I want uh, to understand that. What do you mean uh, for sending the token outside? You mean uh, the token is already um, sent to another sidechain, or uh, just issued with the sent outside? I mean, if the token was originally issued on the sidechain A, mm -hmm. like the issuer sidechain ID is A, and then you transfer this token to some sidechain B, this is means. To send, to send a token somewhere outside. And, uh, to track the token, how, uh, okay, maybe it's too technical, but I don't really, please tell me if uh, it's not the place. Um, how a token, uh, uh, sidechain A can track a token 
on uh, this HMB? I will come to this okay. in a few slides. Okay, so let's wait. Sorry, the layout is a bit bad. Anyway, so um, the core of the MITO protocol is the concept of token instance. It is an entity that is used to represent token inside the sidechain. Um, the protocol does not specify how exactly token instances are managed by the sidechain. It is only assumed that every sidechain holds token as token instances and follow certain rules when transferring them. So they can be combined in a tree or they can be stored as a, as a list like UTXOs. It depends on particular sidechain. <clears throat> so a token instance contain a token name, which is a unique name that identifies a set of fungible or non-fungible tokens. And the fungibility flag defines whether the tokens specified by token name are fungible or not. And depending on this flag, the token instance structure contains either token ID or amount. Um, if, if, if the token is non-fungible, token ID defines the unique identifier of a particular token in the set defined by token name. Um, in this case, token instance represent a single token uh, with a unique token ID. Amount, so if the token is fungible, amount represents an amount of uh, fungible tokens that are held by the token instance. And the issuer sidechain ID is actually the sidechain that issued uh, this token. This is related to your question about how the sidechain tracks who is the owner, who is the original owner of the, of the token. And the owner public ID, the owner pub key is the, ID, the public key of the owner of a particular token instance. And data hash is, some, is the hash of some additional data that may represent some, some information about the token. Um, okay, so as I said, as the tokens can be fungible and non-fungible, a uh, fungible token can be represented by many token instances that have the same token name, uh, but different amounts. And a set of non-fungible tokens can also be represented by a set of uh, token instances. But in this case, they, uh, they are different by their token IDs. Every token instance have different token ID. Um, the token instance structure basically resembles the concept of uh, an output in the UTXO-based system. Um, another data structure that is required to manage token in the sidechain is the sent record, which allows to keep track of tokens that have been originally issued on the sidechain, but then sent somewhere else. So, so this structure contains the receiver sidechain ID. This is the ID of the sidechain where the tokens were sent. The token name is the name of the set uh, of the tokens. A fungibility flag, again, it defines whether these tokens are fungible or not. And if the, the token is non-fungible, it contains the token ID. And if it is fungible, it contains the amount of tokens that have been uh, sent to the receiver sidechain ID uh, of this token type. So the basic idea is that uh, we keep track of how many tokens we send to every sidechain. And this sent record is maintained by the sidechain that originally issued the token. And this is how it can track where it sends the tokens. And sorry, Dimitro, is there a way to, so if you send a coin to another sidechain and the, the, the sinister sidechain ceases, so it never it, 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 this, this transaction that receives the coin is never seen? We thought about this mechanism and it is briefly described in the paper. Basically, we can utilize the, the mechanism of C sidechain withdrawal to withdraw the token that stuck in this C sidechain. Mm -hmm. This is the rough idea. 
Okay, so these two structures, the token instance and sent record, they are basic structures used for token management in the meet to token transfer protocol. It is assumed that sidechain keeps track of both token instances and sent records. There is no strict requirements how exactly this data is saved in the state, but it should be maintained along the, uh, the sidechain state. Okay, so this is almost all. Um, we do believe that this idea of cross sidechain communication will bring a lot of new opportunities to Zendo ecosystem and will allow to build a lot of new applications. There is still a lot of job to, to do, to, to come from the basic concept to a real implementation. But as the demand for such system is growing, I, I think it's inevitable that we will move in this direction. Um, just recently, we published a paper, and you can already take a look. That's all. Thank you.